Busch Gardens Williamsburg is a beautiful theme park located in Williamsburg, Virginia. It's home to 10 different roller coasters as of this video's recording, and today I want to rank them from worst to best. Now just a heads up before we get started, this is probably going to be one of my most controversial ranking videos so far. If you're a roller coaster enthusiast, it's usually somewhat predictable where I might place certain attractions if I'm ranking a park's lineup. But for this one, I feel that I have some extremely unpopular opinions, and all I ask is for those of you watching, be respectful in the comment section and don't get too pissed off. At the end of the day, you clicked on this video to hear my own unique opinions, and that's what I'm going to give to you. That said, I would love to hear about your Busch Gardens Williamsburg rankings in the comments and reasonings as to why. Alright, let's get started with one that I don't think anyone will disagree with, and that's Grover's Alpine Express, open in 2009. This is by far and away the park's smallest coaster, really catering to children more than anything else. But honestly, having ridden a shameful amount of kids' coasters, this one is pretty good for what it is. It's smooth, it's got some fun twists and helixes, and they send you around the layout twice to extend the ride length. I don't really have any complaints for Grover's Alpine Express, it just happens to rank at the bottom because it's not meant for my target audience. Number 9, Tempesto, open in 2015. For those of you who have followed along with the channel, you know I'm not the biggest fan of Premier Ride Skyrocket 2s. This exact layout can be found all over the world and I've been able to ride many of them. Some have lap bars and those I actually think are okay, but then others like Tempesto have these really flimsy comfort collars which do nothing but add to the tight claustrophobic nature of the train. I strongly dislike the vehicles on these rides and I think with better ones, this could actually rank a spot or two higher on my list. I also don't love the random bombardment of positive g-forces or the hang time as that's a force I've never been particularly fond of. Objectively, it's not too bad a coaster, but I'm not going to sit here and pretend like Tempesto is my kind of ride. Number 8, Loch Ness Monster, open in 1978. This is Busch Gardens Williamsburg's oldest roller coaster and it's really become such an icon for the park. It's the only ride left in the world with a pair of inner locking vertical loops and no doubt that's the highlight of the entire ride. But the rest is a fun, janky mess of steel with big drops and elongated turns. When I first rode Loch Ness Monster, there were many instances where I questioned what it was trying to accomplish, but I think because it's so old and is still riding so well, us enthusiasts kind of give it a pass. Objectively, Tempesto is probably the better ride, but when I think about which one I'd rather experience, Loch Ness Monster easily takes the cake for me. Number 7, Invader, open in 2017. This is the tamest wooden roller coaster ever built by Great Coasters International, but having said that, it was quite a bit wilder than I was expecting. I get that it was built to be a family ride, but in my opinion, there's actually quite a lot to love about Invader. For starters, I appreciate how the layout interacts with the terrain, keeping a great pace throughout the ride experience. I also think it's great how there's no seat belts, because that really allows the airtime to stand up more than it would. Admittedly, it is on the shorter side, but other than that, I actually think this is a pretty underrated coaster, and I almost placed it a spot higher on my list. BGW fans, cover your ears for this next one. Number 6 is Apollo's Chariot, opened in 1999. By far the largest coaster on this list so far, I used to have Apollo's Chariot higher up, but when I really thought about it, that was only because I felt pressured to. It's probably one of the most overrated roller coasters I've been on, and I don't feel bad saying that. I get why some might cut it some slack for being the original hyper coaster by Bolliger and Mabillard, but if we're looking at it based off of its airtime strength, the main selling point for this model, it's also by far the weakest. And it's a shame because I actually think the layout and setting for this ride is fantastic. It's super long, and I think it's got an awesome turnaround section, but that's about as far as I go when it comes to how much I like this ride. I've ridden it on two separate visits, each time in the very back row, and I've never been all too impressed. On the contrary, a ride I was impressed by is number 5, Dark Coaster, open in 2023. The newest roller coaster at the park was a questionable fit in their lineup. It was the second kind of indoor coaster they have here, and it's noticeably tamer as well. But I personally found it to be an excellent family coaster, and I think given the room they had to work with, Intamin did a fantastic job. For starters, the theming in the queue line and the atmosphere during the experience is tremendous. Sure, it could have done with a bit more theming during the actual layout, but I can look past that because the layout is awesome. I was actually surprised by how punchy it was, and I find the technology used to be incredible. Even though the layout itself is super short, a switch track allows riders to experience it a second time and the effects are all a little bit different. Not to mention, the straddle seating setup where you're leaning forwards is a great touch and helps differentiate it from all the other rides in the park. And coming in at number 4 is Griffin, opened in 2007. Something you might notice if you're familiar with Sister Park Busch Gardens Tampa in Florida is these parks have a lot of similar coasters. In this case, Griffin is almost identical to Shikra, except it's got an additional inversion. For whatever reason, I've always slightly preferred Shikra, but that doesn't change the fact that Griffin is a spectacular dive coaster. It's one of the larger models focusing on massive vertical drops and speed. When you're sitting in the front row, you feel like your cheeks are going to fly off because of how fast you're going. 
Another cool touch that I think is pretty underrated is Griffin has two surprising bursts of airtime towards the end that I'm a big fan of, and it's something you don't get with the other dive coasters. So for me, it's probably top three for the model and definitely something you should prioritize when visiting the park. Number 3, Alpengeist, opened in 1997. For the longest time, this was my second favorite coaster in the park, and it was only recently that I decided to move it down to number 3. Why, I'll get out of the way first. Halfway through the experience, there's a very uncomfortable mid-course break run that takes away virtually all of your speed, making for a much weaker second half. It's still fun, don't get me wrong, but when the first half is absolutely amazing, the pacing is all skewed. Everything before that point is near perfect, and I've never ridden a BM inverted coaster with the intensity of Alpengeist. It stands an enormous 195 feet tall, meaning it was just 5 feet away from becoming a hyper-invert. Even though the inversions are absolutely massive, you whip through them at speeds that shouldn't even be legal. I think the Cobra Roll, for example, is the single most intense Cobra Roll I've ever experienced, which is saying a lot because there's a ton of coasters with that element. Despite its flaws, I find this ride insanely impressive, and I'll always look forward to riding it when I visit Busch Gardens Williamsburg. But how about a ride that slowly creeped up my list, and that's Verbolton, open in 2012. I think this is one of the most underrated roller coasters in America. Formerly, there was a ride in this plot known as Big Bad Wolf, which was very well loved, and I get why some people may have been frustrated by its removal. But guys, you got a damn good launch coaster out of it, and there is a variety of reasons why. The coaster is majority indoor, but also partially outdoor, which was a weird choice, but it actually works really well in my opinion. It helps create this atmosphere that you're flying through the woods of the Black Forest in Germany. There's two launches sandwiching this indoor section, which by the way is stupid intense, and I have no idea why no one talks about that. On paper, it looks like Verbolton would clearly be a family coaster, but it's this one section that's far from it. Now skip ahead 20 seconds if you'd like to keep yourself from spoilers, but the other element in here that I absolutely love is a drop track. It's very rare you see these on a roller coaster, and Verbolton's, in my opinion, is one of the best out there. It's so theatrical, and the drop pack's a major punch. When the ride emerges into daylight again, it wraps things up with some weirdly profiled turns, but the jank they provide really has its charm to it. I absolutely adore this coaster, and I think it's massively overlooked amongst coaster enthusiasts. But coming in at the number one spot is Pantheon, open in 2022. You know how I said Verbolton was one of the most underrated coasters in the country? Well, I think Pantheon is the most underrated. I first rode this thing in 2022 and fell in love with its exceedingly impressive variety of elements and forces. It contains four launches, three of which are traversed forwards and backwards, and it also is split by a bunny hill delivering outstanding ejector airtime. After this, you careen over a top hat and the rest of the ride from there stands on its own with so much variation in its own right. The 95 degree drop, the outer banked airtime hill, the zero G stall, and the rapid fire transitions at the end are all excellent and initially left me speechless. So much so that when I came back to the park in 2023, I questioned whether or not I was overhyping this thing and was pleased when I came off thinking exactly the same thing as when I first rode. I will address the common criticism with this ride is that it's severely lacking in theming in a park that otherwise excels. And while yes, I do agree, when I rank coasters individually, I do not think a lack of theming hurts the experience, but it can improve it. That's why a very similar coaster in Europe, known as Two Tautas at Park Asterix in France, is the better ride experience. But honestly, even with the ride looking bare bones, everything else you could want in a roller coaster is here on Pantheon, by far my favorite roller coaster at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. Hopefully there weren't too many of you who are raged at my opinions, because if you enjoyed, I would appreciate it if you could give it a like and subscribe to Coaster Dash for more content like this in the future. Also, be sure to check out my new merchandise store where you can pick up a Coaster Dash t-shirt, hoodie, or something else that might pique your interest. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you very soon. Bye guys.